Hello everybody and welcome back to the next episode of the Knit Knack Chat Knitting Podcast. I am your host as always, Zach. I am coming to you from my studio apartment here in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, today is Thursday, uh, March 14th. Happy Pi Day everybody. Um, this is my little corner of the interwebs where I talk about my knitting and my crafting and my spinning and um, I'm gonna try and introduce something a little bit new um, at the end of this podcast so I'll show you I'll um, show you guys that a little bit later um, I'll be doing some fiddling under camera um, just to get that kind of started to get some little like vibes going with this podcast um, like I said, today is Pi Day, March 14th. Um, yeah, it's about like three o'clock in the afternoon. I have the day off and I'm just, I needed to get a podcast recorded. So, um, I have my notes on my iPad here. Um, so I'll be referring down to these occasionally throughout the video and I have a lot to show. It has been quite a while since I recorded last. I have made a lot of progress on stuff. I have whipped down quite a bit actually. Um, finished some really big projects from last month, if you remember the video last month. Um, and yeah, so let's just get right on into it. Um, let's start off with the knit fit of the episode. So today I am wearing my bulky, my basic bulky drop shoulder sweater that I, um, test knit for James and Watts. Um, I knit this out of Barocco Chunky. Um, yeah, and I love this sweater. It is absolutely amazing to wear. It's so comfy. It's a, it's made out of Remix, so it's very soft. Um, it's natural, um, very open and breezy. Um, my and I honestly, I really love that about this sweater. Um, so I'm wearing that and then I'm also wearing my Twisty Boys socks that I knit a couple years ago now. Um, the sock pattern was designed by Nicholas Heed, um, who is also the dyer behind, I think it's called Quitter Yarns. I think that's what their yarn company name is. I've yet to buy something from that company, but I am looking at doing that soon. Um, so yeah, I knit these a while ago and I definitely, they're a cabled um, pattern. So it's definitely something that was super fun. My first time doing cabled socks, I learned a lot. I had to knit them twice because the first time they did not work out. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, so, so at the end of the podcast, I will also be doing a tarot pull. Um, I got this idea from my best friend in the entire world, um, Grace. Hi, if you're watching, I am not sure if you are. Um, but last weekend, I went up to Maple Lake, Minnesota. Um, she had a little book retreat. She booked an Airbnb and had a little like book retreat weekend um, for her birthday. Her birthday is next week. Actually, she'll be turning 25, which is crazy. Um, so she had a little book retreat weekend and, um, gave me, I, she had a, a friend that was there, give her a tarot reading and I was like, oh, I have a, a knitter's tarot deck. So this is the knitting oracle tarot deck that I, I, yes, I had bought it myself, um, from Knitting, Wild Hunt, I believe is the name of the company that I bought this from. Um, let's just see the box. Yes, Wild Hunt is the company that I bought this from. So, I'll have the link if you wanted to look at purchasing your own set or a set for a friend. Um, so, we'll do a poll at the end of the episode and I'll probably just try to shuffle. I'll have my, the deck, whoops, the deck, um, on my lap basically the entire episode, having my knits over and on top of it, 
putting fiber vibes into it as we're here talking. I'll be shuffling a little bit probably between projects and stuff. Um, so hopefully it's not too loud and obnoxious, but we shall see how that goes. Um, be doing the tarot poll at the end and we're also gonna be talking about some books because it was a little book retreat and I got a lot of knitting done, but in order to book retreat, I listened to a book um, and basically started a series of books, which I will talk about at the end of the episode. So, um, I didn't say this already, but you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry under KnitKnackZack. Um, I usually post more on Instagram. Um, and yeah, let's just get right on into it with um, my finished objects. You guys are going to be so happy. So proud of me. I'm so proud of, with myself. Um, I finally finished my Festive Yoke Pullover by Skein Deer. It's two years in the making. It fits phenomenally. I am so excited to wear this come this next winter season. Um, full color work. Don't ignore my little blank spots, but that's what I, I needed. I needed that. I needed to do that. Um, fully color work sweater. Um, you cannot see the blank spots when I'm wearing the sweater, which is perfect. Um, so, yep, fully color work. I did some modified snowflake patterns for these. So they're slightly different from these two that are already up here. Um, but yeah, I really love the sweater. I used um, Chagu like mini, mini shorties to do the sleeves one at a time in order to do the color work and get the tension how I wanted it. Um, I also did go up a needle size for the color work on the sleeves. Um, so you can, I mean, you can clearly tell that they're at a different size, but I do not care. They fit phenomenally, phenomenally. Um, so yeah. There's that. I knit this out of Patagonia by Juniper Moon Fibers. Um, and yeah, it's amazing. I'm so excited to wear this. I'm gonna wear this with like a white button up and like a black button up and like just by itself. I'm gonna wear the hell out of this this coming Christmas season. I'm very excited. So yeah, there's that. And then the next finished object that I have, oh, I did not grab that. <sighs> One second. Very garment heavy finished objects, that's for sure. Um, so I also finished my Journey Cardigan, which is out and released. This is the Journey Cardigan by Jill, Jill Zielinski. I knit this out of Brooklyn Tweed Shelter in the colorway Fireball. Um, I knit the tapered sleeve version and I also knit it a little bit longer so I actually rolled the cuff up and I really like how it looks with the cuff. Um, if you look at Jill's photos of her um, finished piece, I also have the same buttons. I was at Joanne's and I was looking at buttons and I totally, this was after also Jill had posted her buttons for us the testers um, and I totally didn't realize that these were the buttons that she had until I sent it in the group chat and Jill was like, those are my buttons. I'm like, oh, besties. So me and Jill have the same buttons on our cardigans. I love the way that this fits. Fits really great. It's really awesome. I'm really happy with it. I'm excited to wear the heck out of it in like cold months and like just as like a layering piece. I'm very excited. Very classic fit. Um, definitely would knit again. Definitely would knit as like a gift for somebody. Yeah, super fun. Loved it. Could not rave any more about it. Okay. And the next garment that I have is my Ripple Lace Reglan by James and Wants. So let me, I'm just gonna throw this on real quick. So, and look at that. I really love this. Um, I'm gonna stand up a little bit to show you guys. It is, it, oh my gosh, I actually haven't worn this with this, um, these overalls, but these fit like perfectly with the overalls. I honestly, 
could go back and knit more to the body, add more length to the body, because um, I have so much left over of this yarn. I knit this out of um, Mondine sock in their petrol colorway, which is like their straight black. Um, I really love how these look with overalls. So I, I'm so excited already for this to be like a summer knit of mine. Um, I think I need to wash it a little bit more um, and add some more wool wash to soften it up a little bit because it is 100% Portuguese wool. Um, so it is a little, little scratchy, but I really love it. I really love the lace detail on it. Definitely want to knit this again. Um, but yeah, I honestly don't think I'll be able to wear this the rest of the podcast because it is a little itchy and with how much I move around, it will bother me a little bit. So I am just going to put my other sweater back on. Give me one second. There we go. Okay, back in something comfy. And yes, I did take the undershirt off. In case you were like, that wasn't the same thing. I just took the undershirt off. Okay, so those are all the garments that I finished. All of, and now I am itching to cast on another sweater. So I will show you the next sweater, the next yarn I'm going to cast on. I still haven't quite decided the sweater, so I'll need your help in the comments. But we're not done with finished objects. I finally finished the first socks that I cast on for the year. Um, so really dark yarn. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. But this is, these are the Hermione Everyday Socks um, by Erica Luter. I think is how you say it. I don't know. Um, I knit these with a toe-up variation. So I just basically started at the toe. And I did it toe-up. Started, did the pattern basically the same direction. Um, I used, um, the day off sock recipe, which is a toe up recipe with a heel flap and gusset to get my gusset numbers right. Heel flap, gusset, body, all in the thing. And then I did a two by two rib instead of a one by one because I did not want to do a one by one. I knit these out of, um... Les Garçons Mystery Manor set. So this is the Mystery Butler, Mysterious Butler colorway. Um, so yeah, so super fun. This is the first pair of socks that I cast on and it's March and I just finished them. I am a very slow sock knitter. Socks don't really excite me that much compared to big garments for some reason, even though in a way they could take the same amount of time for me to make. But I do have another pair of socks on the needles, finger and weight and DK, and want to knit more. So, and I have so much sock yarn. So we'll need to do that. So yeah, I love how these look. And I have quite a bit left over too. So again, thanks to figure out what to do with my leftovers. Um, my next finished object is my muscle, my Spinberg, my Spinbura. This is my Spin Cycle Muscle Burra by Isolde Teague. I literally finished this on February 28th, 29th, the last day of the Spinbura Cal. Um, I knit it out of Technically, two different colorways. I knit it out of Lapis and Melancholia, I believe, are the two colorways that I used. I tried two blues, so I didn't feel like I was too bad with, um, like, a specific um, color. So I stayed in the same family. I don't wear hats much, so give me a second to figure out my life with this hat. I don't know why I knit hats. I barely ever knit hats and this is too tight. So I need to do something about that when I knit more Musselbergs. So I just need to do big fat, big fat brim. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, there's that. 
really pretty fade. And then it's technically reversible. Burp, burp. So, yeah. I could do this. Anyways, there's that. That is all of my finished knit objects. So, um, at the beginning of the year, in January or something, I signed up to take an e-spinning class down at Darn Knit Anyway, which is a local yarn shop here in Minnesota that I go to very frequently. I attended their sweater camp in February, and I also did the spinning class um, with Carly and Carol over there. Hi guys, if you're watching. Um, so I have a very crappy, like not even 50 grams of a chain ply skein. It's just hanging over there that I just don't talk about. I don't think about it. Um, but then I were also given a second um, full like braid of a cheviot, cheviot blend um, that I was able to pull singles of in the first class. And I did fairly consistent singles. I felt very confident with what I was doing. And they just sat for quite a while. And then like beginning of March, end of February, I wanted to get back on my wheel, on my e-spinner. I couldn't really get back into it. I messaged Carly and was like, hey, can you, can we get together and you can help me like figure out how I can re-get started on like spinning? She was like, yeah, perfect, no problem. So we got back together and I brought a different fiber that I wanted to start spinning. So she showed me how to do that. I will show that in my whips. <clears throat> but then later, like the next week or so, I grabbed the two skeins, uh, the two bobbins that I had of these sing of this single ply cheviot and I plied them together. So here is my first um, spun piece. So I, ha I, made, I got little tags today at Target. Um, so it's my first big spin. It's a Cheviot blend, thick and thin, bulky. It's about 156 yards for 100 grams. And I finished this on March 4th, 2024. So yeah, it's a, it's a two ply bulky, uh, 156 yards. So very happy with it. Um, I may or may not, I don't know if I'll do anything with it. It'll just be my forever first, first happy ply. First thing I'm happy that I've plied. So yeah, really love it. I love a, love a, love a natural. Very, very nice. So it was super fun to spin. Hope to do more spinning. So, um, yeah, we will see more hopefully. <laughs> so there's that. That is all of my finished objects. Um, now let's just jump in to my um, works in progress. I'm just going to do a quick shuffle while we get into works in progress. Um, again, let me know how we feel at the end of the episode about this whole tarot thing. Um, it could be fun to like incorporate it into episodes or something. Um, I'm thinking this first one, just doing a single pull at the end and reading what the book says about the pull. But I think it could be fun too, to um, maybe do like a pull at the beginning of the episode during finished objects and then during whips, maybe. Let me know how this goes and we'll see, we'll see how it flows. So my first work in progress is in my Hohe and Co. Pampa bucket. Um, this is the sleeve Seamless Baby Hoodie by Maggie Van Buten. Um, it's just a simple hoodie pattern, bulky weight. Um, the garter stitch ridge, edge, raglan. It has a seed stitch hem, whatever. Um, today I finished off the hood. I, um, I am using... Juniper Moon Fibers Bud. I can't remember what color. I bought this years ago from Use. 
and frogged it from a pillowcase that I made. Um, so I had to wind up my second skein to be able to finish my hood. And I just have the little sleeves to do and I have to sew on my the buttons that I got. Cute buttons that I got. Cute little wooden buttons to go on here. Oh, that'll look so cute. So I'm very excited for this. It's 100% Pima cotton. So it will grow and my sister-in-law will have an easy time taking care of it, I hope. Um, and hopefully it will last for more than one child. My brother and sister-in-law are having a baby due in July. Um, so yeah. I have this garment for them. I knit the socks that I, you guys saw last time. And I am working on a baby blanket that is almost done. So there's that. Um, knitting it to pattern. Honestly, I am not loving this pattern. It is not greatly written. It's not written well, is the proper verbiage. It's not written well. It's very clunky. Um, it gets the point across. You, I honestly could make so many adaptations to it to make it read better, I guess. Um, so, yeah. So it's just, it's just the point of like fully reading things and realizing, oh, this is what she wanted to get, have done. It's very, it's a very silly pattern, but it, it's good. And it's, I believe it's free on Ravelry. So definitely check it out. Understand that it is intermediate in the sense that you need to know like the construction, what kind of construction you're doing and like, just like basics on that. It is also done fully in European. So all of the measurements are done in centimeters, which is fine, but it's annoying that I can't just like be like, oh, this is actually just eight inches but alas. Okay, my next object I cast on yesterday um, before work, um, and it's literally not even a full toe yet. So it's a pair of socks. It's a sock. Currently one sock. Just doing the one sock right now. Um, I am using the leftover main skein from my little cozy little toes socks that I knit that I knit for my nephew, the rib, little cute little rib socks that I knit. Um, I'm using those to um, make a matching or a, a parent pair for my sister-in-law. And then hopefully if I have more of this, I'll make another pair for my brother. Um, so yeah, these are the colors I'm using. This is the same color as um, polka dot sheep in caramel, I think. And then this is a Muse 2320 Mockingbird skein. Not sure what colorway, but yeah, I think she'll really like it. I think, I think she'll like that they match the baby's sock. So I obviously, most recent whip sock whip is in my Dobby knitting sock bag. Dobby's sock sack, which is my favorite sock bag. I need to get another one of these or another like similar pair of these, um, similar like style of bag. Um, that pattern, the Dear Bjorn pattern is by Fiber Creative over on Ravelry. So there's that. Um, it's a like a cabled, it's a left and right. So like the right sock and the left sock have different cable directions. Um, but it's a little like one stitch cable that I think will be pretty easy and pretty quick once I get going on it. That kind of sock I usually do, will do one at a time because they will take more time for me to do two at a time if I'm having to cable so much. So we'll see how that goes. See what I decide to knit for my brother. Probably just be a basic, basic rib sock or something, something that'll go quick. Okay, um, next is a pattern that I really have neglected the last two months. Um, this is my Planet A scarf that I am knitting. This is by So Sue Summers, Susan Summers, um, German brioche designer. Um, I'm, it's a comparative climate, like, climate calculation coordinating 
um, pattern. So it's brioche section and then followed by a garter section with a stockinette little like um, border or like barrier. Um, I am using a modification that I saw on Ravelry of somebody who did just did mohair held as the contrast colors and had a, just a main skein. So I'm using the Peep Get Bent main color from Muse 2320's um, Progressive East End project of last year. Um, so it's a Tweety neutral um, with a whole bunch of colors. And I am using Knitting for Olive Mohair, Soft Silk Mohair in several colors. Um, right now I am using the colorway Quince for the month of March, or sorry, for the month of February. Um, and I just have not touched this. I didn't touch this at all in February. I clearly did like two rows. I did one row earlier today. So I just need to sit down and knit on this. Um, yeah, I'm technically knitting the scarf version of this which is longer, obviously, but it's not as wide as the shawl version of this, which in ways I do regret sometimes. I am kind of regretting, but I think the scarf one will be better. I for sure am probably going to need to grab, get another skein of this, which kind of makes me meh, but um, it'll be fine. It'll be, I'll be fine. It shall be fine. I have this in my French Supply Co. canvas bag. I have all of the mohair in here. Um, and it just sits. It just needs to get put in a place where I can sit and knit on it. I should just put it by my bed and knit like one or two garter rows. It's just garter right now, so it should not be hard, but I'm just like, no, not uh, into it right now. So eventually that will get done. Um, next, where is that bag? Oh, it's right here. In my little, um, pie bag. Oh my gosh, my pie bag. Happy Pi Day! Ah! Love! Um, I, yesterday, yesterday? Yesterday, I turned my heels on my Daybreak, or Basic Bed Socks by Emily Boldum. Bold, Bolden? Bold, Bold, Boldon? Boldon? You can see the name there. Um, so I turned my heels on my Boucle DK Socks. These are knit in the colorway Reading Tea Leaves by Muse 2320. So here they are. Um, I'm basically going to knit these the leg of these socks till I run out of yarn. Um, it's been forever since I've done like a short row heel or like a double stitch heel. Um, but as I was doing them with this yarn, I, was, I couldn't really read my stitches at all. So I don't even know like it seems very well kept and very well like stitched up and there doesn't seem like there's any holes, which I think is part of the yarn being pretty amazing. Um, and so I definitely want to knit these socks again in a basic DK to look at the, the construction of this heel. And it might be something that I do for all my heels because I really, really liked it. So, yep, I just got to knit, 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 knit on the leg of these socks and these will be done. I think I have the end of, to the end of March or something for the buddies in Boucle make along. Um. So yeah, definitely going to try to finish these by the end of the month. We shall see. Okay, there's that. And then next, I started again the Oink Pig by Susan B. Anderson. I knit two of these last year. Um, I bought the kit, I think it was May's Makers League make from Darna anyway. So I bought a kit and knit two pigs out of the kit and I still had leftover yarn. So I bought another bouncy ball and I have like part of another pig done. Um, I'm doing a different tail than I did for the other ones. Um, and yeah, so here's the little pig. It's just his body right now. Um, I think I'm gonna knit him without wings because the wings were kind of finicky. So I just have to get get to um, sewing everything together, really. 
and doing everything that I need. I have to put the nose, the tip of the nose in. I have to put all of the other details on it. I have to knit all the things. So, um, yeah. Oop. There's that. And I still have so much of this pink left. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Because I think this is 100%. Honestly, I think if this is 100% cotton, I might just knit, like, booties or something out of it. I don't know. The two people that I know that are having babies right now are both having boys, which kind of sucks for me right now, um, alas. And I have this in my um, depressed gothic knitter bag. I remember, I think I remember showing this like ages ago when I had been gifted this. I got gifted this from a patron over at Muse2320 who found this fabric of this male knitter. If you remember that and you remember the, um, like the fabric line that this person is from, please feel free to put it in the comments below because I do not remember. She told me, but I totally forgot. Um, so she had quilted me this bag because it reminded her of me. Reminded her of me. Yeah, this man knitting. So, yeah in that bag. Perfect. And next I have... Boop -a -doop. So while I was at my book retreat, I brought along a project. I brought along a few couple of projects knowing I would hopefully finish one thing. I got very close, um, but I did not really finish anything. Um, I brought my baby blanket and I got pretty far on that. But then I didn't realize that I had actually brought my darning needle and I could have continued going, which is fine. Um, but I finally brought my Easy Knit Dishcloths book. Um, and I cast on the Broken Rib dishcloth out of my Judy Long Flora yarn that I had bought. I believe I bought this at Darn Knit. Um, so it, it's, this is the colorway Tiger Lily. It's a, literally my favorite colors, blue and orange, marled together, which is why I snagged it. And it's just in a broken rib. This is a fingering weight dishcloth knit on a US2. Um, the pattern says to cast on 75 stitches, but I cast on 75 stitches and I measured it after knitting like maybe half an inch or so. And the dishcloth was already like a foot long, like a foot in width. And I was like, I do not want a, like a 12 foot by 12 foot um, dishcloth. So I figured out what my stitches per inch were, um, having 75 stitches being 12 inches. And I went down and I cast on 63 stitches instead. And now this is a 10 inch washcloth. Pet peeve I have. So all of these dishcloths in this book are 10 inches by 10 inches. What would have been a smart thing for the publishers to do? And what did they not do? They did not make this book 10 inches by 10 inches. This is an eight inch by eight inch book. That's just annoying. I can't use my book as my swat, as my like gauge for how big my dishcloths are. What's the point? If you're gonna make an eight inch by eight inch book, make your disc dishcloth patterns eight inch by inch eight inches by eight inches yes i could probably modify i see you all talk and be like you can all you can just modify it to be eight by eight i'm like yeah i could but i already knit like more than half of this this is in broken rib by the way um and this is honestly it's neat it's very it's a very fun rhythm to knit um super fun i'm loving how the colors are playing um so I definitely, I'm going to obviously finish this and I might knit another one or two to make a set um, for myself out of this. Um, and then hopefully I can have enough left over to knit something kind of sexy for myself out of this cotton. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, we shall see how that goes. Anyways, so that, so that that's that. Um, and this book is by Gila ben Benedict uh, Nygaard. Um, I bought this from the Yarnery a while ago. 
Um, and yeah. And then I have the project just in my fringe supply co, uh, small bag, small, a small fringe supply co bag that I have. So fun projects. It's just, I casted on something easy while I was at, um, the book retreat. Um, so, okay. So I have one more work in progress and this is my first spinning work in progress. So I'm just gonna grab my whole container real quick. I have it sitting right here to move some stuff out of the way. Oh, I did not make sure I grabbed that from my closet. So I am gonna show you first my e-spinner because I don't remember if I've shown, if I'd shown you guys before, but um, after I graduated college, I bought myself a um, Dreaming Robots e-spinner online for myself as a graduation present. Here she is, e-spinner. She's super lovely. Um, and when I went to take my class, I had like grabbed my box that it came in because it had sat for like two years since I graduated because I was so scared to touch it. Um, and I had lost the power adapter. Like I had a little like cube box but I lost like the final cord that I needed to plug into the wall. And I was like, where the heck will that go? Luckily I was able to borrow somebody else's that was there. One of the teachers, I think I took Carly's. She let me borrow her so I could spin on my e-spinner, which is amazing, which I really appreciate. Um, but then Carol had said how she bought a portable um, battery pack um, to run her wheel. And I was like, Perfect, I'm gonna do that. So I immediately went on Amazon and I ordered one and that is now what I use to power my e-spinner. This is my portable pack. So there's that. I got this at Dreaming Robot and definitely need to go to their website and get some small accessories. So let me show you quick um, the fiber that I recently just spun up. So this is um, not Zilla. Um, I do not know if she still dies or anything. I had bought this um, fiber from the yarn store that used to be in La Crosse, Wisconsin Unwound Yarn Shop. So this is a 7525 Merino Nylon bat or top, um, 100 grams. I bought this when they were going out of business, so they were doing a huge sale. I bought the fiber, I bought a drop spindle, all of this sort of stuff, um, and I just hadn't touched it. So here is the spin, the two singles that I have. How it kind of like broke up is one half of it was this really bright neon green, and the other half was this really pale blue, um, and yeah, it was absolutely gorgeous. So here are my two singles that I have just waiting um, to be plied together. They're both thick and thins. Again, I think it'll be another bulky, probably about another 200 yards. Um, so maybe I'll just use those these two skeins for a project together and do a little like slip stitch or like mosaic pattern with these together. Um, yeah. I'm very excited to um, ply these together. I should do that soon, but I need to get a lazy cape that will work with these or just roll these into the ball, into balls. I'm not sure what I'm going to do just yet, but I need to get on to um, plying them so I can um, figure out what I'm going to spin next. I have some dyed fiber that um, Sarah from Muse2320 had died forever ago and just never, it never sold. Um, so I took that off of her hand. I have a skein of uh, Malabrigo Nub, which is their dyed um, stuff, their dyed fleece. Um, so I want, that's just black. So I feel like I could, if I can pull a consistent, like really thin or like fairly thin, um, black and then with those two colors I might do a three ply um so that could be kind of fun um these will for sure just be two plies but then if I could have a three ply that would be really cool um 
yeah. So there's that. That is all um, of my knitting and spinning stuff that I have um, worked on and made a lot of progress in. So let me just put all of this stuff back. Um, now we're on quickly to acquisitions. Um, and then we'll go on and talk about books and do the tarot poll. Okay. So my first acquisition I am going to show. So I actually forgot to show this last month because I totally forgot that I had gotten it. Um, but I remember a while ago, I, end of January, I surprise bought myself the, um, which set is this from? Mysterious, the latest Mysterious set from Les Garçons. Mysterious Cabin? I don't remember what it is now. I think it's Cabin. Yeah, Mysterious Cabin, I believe is what it is. So I'd gotten the first one at the end of January and I never showed it in the February podcast. So you for sure, if you've gotten it, you've already seen it. Um, so this is the Mysterious Dog. So this is Mysterious Dog, and then the mini is Lyra's hat. I'm just going to take the pin and the sticker out so you can see all of those variations in that skein. Cute little doghouse. I'll show a close-up of the pin and the sticker. So cute. Max does such a great job with um, his design and his artistry is so pretty. I really love that something that they collaborate on. So there's that. So that was the first month. That was January's. And then I got back from my little trip and got this in the mail. This is the second month. This was the mysterious cat. And then the mini is Kirby's Pink. And this is, both of these are on their BFL sock base, by the way. It's a very, look at this, this little sock pin. I love this little sock pin, it's so cute. It's giving me inspo for what I want to knit next, I guess. Um, so it's a really deep brown, and this pink is just so pretty. I love, I'm loving this light right now, this overcast. And then the pin and the sticker literally the exact same pose oh so cute so cute so i am just waiting for the last skein or yeah the last skein of this club i'm very excited um this is my second mysterious set from Le Garcon, um and i love i love them so i obviously i knit with my mysterious manner one i have knit one thing, my Mysterious Manor one. I still have the other two skeins, um, the other two sets of that. And then I have this set. Um, and yeah. So there's definitely so much knitting and I have all of my Muse 2320 Troop, all of my Troop 2320 sock sets to get through. I think I have nine, nine of those to get through. Um, as well. So I have a lot of sock knitting to be doing, ladies and gentlemen. Um, even though I don't have to knit socks out of them, but the idea of a sock set and knitting socks or a lot of giveaway options. So um, who knows? Um, next, I need, need to grab these skeins actually because I forgot that I didn't grab these skeins. So I'm just going to grab one skein. One of each of these skeins. So um, do you remember in February, I worked at sweater camp. Um, I volunteered my time, so I wasn't getting paid, but, um, I was kindly given a gift card to darn it anyway, um, which I gladly spent on, um, a sweater quantity of yarn for myself. Um, and I snagged, um, La Bienname Twist Nouveau. This is the colorway quartz uh, uh, quartz fume, fume. It's a dusty purple, dusty purple that, um, 
So this is a fingering weight, so it's a twist, it's a two-ply twist, I think. Non-superwa, no, no, it's not a two, uh, it probably is a two-ply. Two-ply non-superwash um, merino that I am going to be knitting into a So Basic sweater by Max the Knitter um, eventually. I think probably by the end of the year, definitely. Um, oh, this, this has just been sitting in my closet, getting all of the other wool smells on it, and it smells so good. So there's that. I bought that with my gift card from them. I bought this the day that I went back um, and le relearned how to spin, basically. And then um, when I was buying my buttons for um, my Journey cardigan and for the um, hoodie, I was looking in the yarn section at Joann's and I saw um, this Baronet Blanket Extra. So this is a super chunky jumbo. This is a number seven giant jumbo yarn in the colorway Crimson. I bought three of these and I am planning on knitting another balloon dog. Another balloon dog. So I'm planning on knitting a super big chunky one for um, my newest nephew. So yeah, that is the plan for this. Um, I also have another animal kit. I have a little stuffy kit that I bought from the yarnery last year, I think, to knit. So I hopefully will probably knit that for him as well. Or maybe I'll knit it and save it for their next child. Because um, this baby is getting officially getting one, two, three, four, um, four things. I honestly might knit this for my friend's baby. Um, cause my sister-in-law did say that anything else that I should, that I knit, I should knit in like a green color. Um, because I will not say his name cause I do not know if any of my family watches this podcast, but I've been trusted with his name. So I'm going to be a good gunkle and save the name for the handoff. So, um, but, uh, she said green. So I think I might go back to Joanne's and see if they still have this on sale and if they have it in green. Or maybe I'll check um, Amazon and see if Amazon has it in like a forest green. I don't even know. I think I'll knit this for sure in the red. And uh, if I can knit a full dog in three and have very little leftovers, I will definitely buy another set of three and knit a second one. Um, so yeah. That is all, that's all the knitting content. That is all the knitting content. Um, so let's circle back to the book retreat that I went on. Um, went up to Maple Lake and um, didn't really have a book in mind of like reading. I brought a couple of books that I um, one book that I had both actually had started reading when I was started reading the other I started listening to earlier um, but then I went on Hoopla which is a um, library audiobook ebook um, CD app for like renting like through your library so I have it connected actually to the Dakota County Library even though I'm in Hennepin County or no I'm in Ramsey County here in St. Paul um, and um, I remember a couple years ago, maybe a year, last year sometime, I had started listening to a vampire, the Vampire Knitting Club series by Nancy Warren. Um, and I only had like a little over an hour left of the first book. And I was like, why did I not finish this book? What, what stopped me from finishing this book? So I just reborrowed the book and I was going to start it over and then I was just like, no, nah, I don't really want to start it over. So I just finished off that book, um, which was fine. I kind of, while listening to it, remembered what had happened in sequence. And then I started the second book the next day or later that day. Again, so good. And then I finished that book in like a day. And now I finished 
I started and finished the third book in the series. Um, I started that two days ago and I finished it yesterday before work. And today I started the fourth book. Such a good series so far. I highly recommend it. Shared it on my Instagram earlier this week about it. I got some chats from Professor Pearl, from Nicole, about how she's reading it and how they're really fast reads. Um, the audiobooks are only like less than four, like less than 10 hours. They're all less than 10 hours. They're super quick. The narrator is super engaging. The writing style is just so in entrancing. It's hypnotic. It's very easy to listen to and it's very suspenseful. It is a um, murder mystery, fantasy, romance-esque, and knitting adjacent, knitting wise and themed book. And it is absolutely phenomenal. The character Lucy is hilariously clumsy and, um, spoiler alert, she is a witch um, who basically inherits her grandmother's knitting shop after she dies. That's all I'm gonna say about that. And she basically finds out that she's a witch and there is this vampire knitting club that reside, that meet at her yarn shop um, late at night. And all of the vampires are phenomenal knitters because they've been dead for centuries and are bored out of their minds. Who wouldn't want that? I want that. I wanna be dead for centuries and just knit my life away. And anybody else? Anybody else? Are you in the back? <laughs> Why did I say that? Um, it's really good. The, yeah, it's crazy. This fourth book right now is kind of bonkers. It's so engaging. The The start of the books remind me um, about the, with the Harry Potter series. A lot of people have this critique about the Harry Potter series of the beginning of every book restates like the opening mantra that you get or like it like basically summarizes the first part of the book. First part of the first book every time. So you get the same, like, you could really jump into any book in the series and get introduced to all of the characters properly in a proper manner. You be able to like just like hop right in and be fine. You don't really need to read the series in order, but it is consequential. You are going from one book, like one book really does like just lead into and tumble into the next. This girl's life is crazy. So definitely give it a look up. Again, it is The Vampire Knitting Club by Nancy Warren. Absolutely loving it. Um, we'll be giving it five stars every time on Goodreads. Try my best to add little, little reviews on it. Um, most of them are all the same because I really love, I'm really loving it. It's really easy to just sit and listen to and devour the content that's in it. So there's that. That's really all that I'm like really listening or reading to right now. Um, I listen mostly to it while I am driving to work or like on the train into work. Um, that's usually when I'm listening to it or um, I'll just like throw it on in the morning if there's not really anything on YouTube that I want to watch. I will um, just throw that, throw that on my AirPods or through my speaker and just listen to that. Okay. So without further ado, let's try this tarot thing. Um, I haven't read a lot about like ways to pull tarot, but um, I watched a podcast on... Um, Smosh Pit. It is called Smosh Mouth featuring Amanda and Shane. Amanda Lehan Lehanthan and Shane Top. And they did an episode where Amanda pulled tarot for herself, for Shane, and for their guest. Amanda had been doing tarot stuff during the pandemic and um, basically had some understanding. So what she does is she... Um, does like her favorite number um which is like five so she'll like go five and the fifth card is her read for that she'll do past past present future for this right now we're just going to do one pull 
Um, so I kind of want it to be kind of a big-ish poll. And since today is um, March 14th, um, I'm just going to do 17, which also does happen to be my birthday. Um, oddly enough, I did not try that. While I was shuffling this last time and thinking, I was like, oh, let's just add the two numbers together. Oh, 17. That's my birthday. So I guess there's a little bit of a sign between that. So let's just count out one, two, three, four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it is the knitter. So this is the card. Let me just pull up my little reading guide that I have. Okay. Um, the knitter represents the querent themselves, aka you, and the person you are reading for. It has no inversion. Wow. So, um, with this, I really, it just is a reflection of yourself. Um, expressing yourself in your knitting, being, trusting yourself, I feel, is what I'm getting from this, and trusting the process and what you are making, what you are crafting, what I'm crafting, figuring out, um, looking at what you craft as a reflection of yourself and you as a person. Um, so yeah, go on, go forth and knit and be the knitter for yourself. Um, I really appreciate you guys all sitting through this and knitting with me, having your water, your wine, whatever. It is probably going to be pretty late when I upload this tonight. Um, so I really do appreciate you all sitting down and knitting with me and having me pull this tarot with you. Um, let me know in the comments below if you want me to continue doing this or if you have any um, suggestions about how I should do this. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, Again, here is one final look again at what we pulled. We pulled the knitter. Um, go forth and be the knitter that you are meant to be um, for the world, I guess. Um, have a good night, guys. Bye.